In this video, we'll take a look at creating structural openings. This video will conclude module four on walls. Most training material will instruct you to use the wall opening for rectangular cuts. The better method is to use doors and windows from the architectural ribbon. These give quick and fast openings with the correct symbolic representation when they're elevated or viewed in a section. Go ahead and open up project A. In this tutorial, we'll add doors and windows as structural openings into our core area and also onto some of our walls around the perimeter of the structure. Let's begin by looking at structural openings. In many tutorials and lessons, they'll instruct you to create a structural opening through a wall on the structure ribboning with the opening panel. On the opening panel here, you'll see that we have wall opening. The problem with the wall opening tool is that you have to manually define that opening and also create a symbolic representation for the structural opening with detail lines. So a preferred method is to select the architecture ribbon and instead use doors or windows. Let's begin by using a door. On the architecture ribbon, go ahead and select door. And in the structural template, You'll note here that we just have two very simple openings. We have M door opening. And in here, you can see that we have a handful of different type sizes that we could use. In this example here, we're going to use 915 by 2134 as a starting point. Now this particular door will be hosted into walls. As soon as you move your cursor into the model, you get a no entry symbol. As I move over walls, you can then see a door opening is previewed. So let's begin by putting a door opening into each of these cores. Now I'd like to have this door opening central and you'll see that Revit will snap to a central point, which is quite convenient. So we'll go ahead and place down these openings and you can see I'm just left clicking here and then that door opening is created. And again here, I want to ensure that this one is also central. Now here, if, you're, if you can't get a central opening, I'm just going to put one here, which is, as you can see, off center. Then to centralize that, we can go to the annotate ribbon. We can select the aligned command. And we can place a dimension between the wall edge, the door center, and the opposite wall edge. Place those dimensions down and select EQ, which will then equalize and centralize that door opening. But like I've said, and as you can see here, the door opening will try and snap center to these walls. Let's play some more. So we'll go back to the architecture ribbon and select door again. And here we're going to place a door opening 500 units away from this wall. Now you can see I can actually get that by using a temporary dimension. But again, if we've not placed that accurately, perhaps like this, of course, the element will have temporary dimensions. So I can just select this dimension over here, type in 500, and you can see that door has now been positioned. And I'll place another door opening up the top here. If you want both of these door openings to be in alignment, we can use the align command. So I can select a line. I can pick the center line of this door here and the center line of this door here. And of course, constrain those two openings together. If I click modify to release the align command and I decide to change the position or setting out of this door here. So let's say that we want this one to now be 750. As I type this in, you can see that it then forces the door opening at the top to also move. Okay, let's return that back to 500. Now we also require some openings into this core area over here and also this uh, store area here. So again, we'll go back to our architecture tab, select door, and we can put an opening in here. Again, I'll centralize that just for the minute in there. And we'll place another door opening here. And in this case, I want this hard up against the column. Now again, when I place that opening in, I can use the dimension here just to set that to zero. And again, you can see my opening is now hard up against that column. Now let's take a look at the advantage of using doors for structural openings. If we look at the south elevation, you can now see that when we look into that core area, we can see our door elevated. 
And of course, we have a structural opening here, but we also have this symbolic view, which is quite important. Again, if we look at the 3D view, we can see here that we have our core area, and of course, we have our structural openings for our core. Another thing we should look at is the analytical model. So again here, if I open up the analytical model, you can see again those structural openings are now previewed. OK, let's return back to the ground floor plan. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to place one window opening into this wall here. And also we'll place a single window into each of these wall segments over here. Now, one of the things that will happen is we might not be able to see this window when it's placed in plane because the cut plane might be lower than the window sill. But on the architecture ribbon, we can select window. Once again, in the properties palette, in the type selector, I can select my window opening size. And in this case here, I'm going to use a 600 by 1200. Notice here in the instance properties, you can see that we can set a seal height and currently the seal height is 900, but we can also add a head height as well. This enables us to place this structural opening in plan, but like I've said, we will get a message telling us that we can't see this window opening in the plan view. So let's go ahead and place this in. Again, we can use the same trick to centralize this. Yep, so we'll place another one in here. Again, you can see this warning being displayed. This is simply just telling us that this window opening cannot be displayed in this view at present. That's fine. And we'll place another one in here. And our final opening will centralize into this wall opening here. Okay, now if we did temporarily want to see those openings, we could change the view range. So I'm going to click modify to come out of the window command. And then in here, we'll select view range. Note that we can also use VR for the keyboard shortcut. Now here, you can see that we have a top range. I'm going to set that to unlimited. This won't affect any of our structural plans. And the cut plane, I'm going to make 1000. So of course, that will then pick up all of our structural openings throughout this whole plan view. And of course, now we can see our window openings and we can also see the doors and the window opening we placed in here. Once again, if I wanted to ensure that this window opening was perfectly centralized about the wall, we can go up to the quick access toolbar and select a line dimension, or we could click on the annotate ribbon, click aligned. And again here, I can snap to the end of the wall, to the center of the window opening, and then to the end of the wall over here, place those dimensions down and use EQ to centralize them. Now, of course, when we're documenting these views, we don't want to see EQ there. So we can select the EQ string of dimensions. And in the properties palette, you'll notice here we have equality display. And I'm going to set this here to values. So of course I can now display the actual dimensions from the end of the wall. And of course, I could also do a similar thing over here. OK, so again, let's take a look at the 3D model. And you can see here that we have our door openings and also our window openings in place. And if we open up the analytical model, again, we'll see those same structural openings featuring into the walls. OK, so that concludes this exercise.